You're in Fusion 360. You've got a design that's got the same shape showing up several times. And maybe in this, like in this example, these are all slightly different sizes. How do we build this faster? Hey, Tyler Beck with Tech and Espresso. Today we're talking about sketch patterns and how and when to use them. So I'm designing this tolerance jig for my 3D printer. And I want to be able to pattern these shapes around the sketch. I want three or four of them. And the reason I'm thinking sketch pattern is because it is different than this example where I've got a bunch of geared teeth and I've got like 45 of these things. The sketch is slow. It's hard to work with. I don't like having to pitch, pick each one when I do the extrusion. So um, if you're doing a lot of instances, use the pattern that exists out in the features. Use that pattern. And there's another video for that. But back into the sketch, I want to do three or four of these and that's going to be fine. It's not going to be too heavy for the sketch and it's going to make it easier for me to edit these others and work with them. So I'll hit the S key and I'll hit type in pattern. You can see a few here, pattern on path, circular pattern. We're going to be talking about circular pattern and the rectangular pattern today. Circular pattern. And the first thing is what sketch objects do I want? And so I can go in and box select those things I care about, grab any of the ones I missed. I've got five selected. Come to the next box, center point. This is the thing we're patterning around. So in this case, the circle or the center point would work just fine. Pick the circle. It gives me a preview. Now, a few things that are going on here. I can see uh, the quantity right here. So you may not be able to see it. Sometimes uh, the dialogue can be shrunk. So look for this little straggler out here. This is where your quantity can also be found, this little shortcut tool. That was a gotcha for me. All right, so how many do we want? We want four total. So the quantity includes the original. If you put in one, it's not gonna add anything. If you put in two, it's adding one, so it includes the original. Now, there's the suppress option, and that allows you to control each, each instance. So I'm patterning around 360 degrees, but if I want them laid out in 90s like it is, I can still choose to skip one of them, or two of them, or all of them, whatever. So you can control which ones get skipped. And then there's this option of controlling by angle. So if I know that I'd like to have four of them laid out over 180 degrees, that's how I can set it up. Or I could have four laid out in 90 degrees. So it's trying to sneak all of them in to that specific total angle. The symmetric is kind of similar in that it allows you to do it about um, an angle count. So if I'm doing it around 180, I can do these symmetric uh, styles. So it's choosing to do it about 180, and then it's using this as a reference and then trying to do a symmetric about 180. Kind of cool. I'm gonna do full. I've got my four, I hit okay. Now, when you pattern this, they're all the same, or they all have these constraints applied. So the diameter has already been set. Let's try and put it again. You know what's gonna happen? It's gonna yell at me. It's saying that you're adding a dimension on something that's already defined, meaning they're all 30, right? If I make this 35, they all adjust. Okay, how do I get around that? Well, if you ever wanna pat, excuse me, if you ever wanna edit the pattern, double click on this little constraint thing here, and that will bring you right back into your dialogue and you can make edits. You could make it five or four, or three, whatever, you can make the changes that you want. So if you now know that you want this to be 35, 34, 33, 32, then what we want to do is delete this constraint relationship. And now I can start adding the dimensions that I care about. The bummer is I can't ever edit that sketch pattern again. It's now, um, you know, just a one time event that's not editable in the future. So with these dimensions, I could, of course, say that, you know, all these lines are equal. Okay, so I can select all these lines and make them equal and start adding the constraints that I care about. Okay, let's talk about this sketch pattern with rectangles. So I want to uh, lay out four of these rectangles. 
and I could use the pattern to drive it to make it intelligent. And what I'll do is I'll do a search for the rectangular pattern or go up to create in the sketch tools and find rectangular or circular pattern. There's the instance that I care about and I'm gonna pattern that. Now, this is where it gets kind of interesting with rectangles is you can have multiple directions. So do you wanna do, you know, pattern them this way or did you wanna pattern them going up? You can do both <laughs> or you can do either or. So let's do the direction along this edge and the distance of 20. Okay, so there's some different types of spacing here. The extent versus spacing. So right now it's putting in them 20 millimeters apart for spacing. So if I make this, you know, 30, it's just gonna space each one out. And it doesn't matter how many I add, they're all gonna come in at that spacing. The other option is to do the extent, and that's the total distance that it covers and then it divides it by that quantity. So I have 60 and I want three of them, it's gonna be at 20 millimeters a piece, right? So you can, whatever variable you do know, you can type it in that way and then let Fusion solve it. What about direction two? Make sure the box is highlighted, click on the line and it's gonna pattern going up. And it doesn't do anything in the preview because I have not specified the distance yet for this second value. So if I do, again, 20, it's dropping those in, going up vertically. I can drag it to manipulate it here. And now I have you know, a distance of 49 total and a distance of 60 going right. Now you can suppress any of these you don't want. So you don't want this center one, you wanna get rid of that one. Um, you can use that suppress capability to suppress any that you wanna, any instances you'd like to skip. Click OK. And now I have these all patterned. They're all equal to each other and they're being constrained by this pattern. Double click on the constraint. You can come back and edit these and make adjustments as needed and suppress anything you don't want. Hit OK, resketches it. Hey, check out my other pattern tutorials for Fusion 360 along with this video that YouTube thinks would be helpful. I'll see you in the next video.